very great pleasure to Not long. send off. No, I haven't even spoken of you yet. Okay. No, uh, <laughs> a, a great pleasure to send off this series of, of uh, evening lectures for the August session, and to send it off with a dear friend, Mancha Jawar. Uh, Mancha has been um, just a tremendous presence for us in the last couple of years, and uh, we continue to impress him into, <laughs> into work. I like to think that you know another university is paying for a sabbatical, but I like to think that we're the ones who are really responsible for getting him forward on his uh, <laughs> Lisa books. And so we'll be hearing another chapter or a portion of a chapter tonight. Um, I, I want to thank uh, uh, Mancha especially for well for the help he's doing in organizing important events like the one that's unfolding right now, a very special seminar with Frederick Moten, uh, Denise Ferrara da Silva, and Stefano Harney, and Mancha is participating. It's a conversation, yeah. and I, it's really quite exciting. Um, I'm saying this because there are people watching us from abroad, um, so it's, uh, ah. the, 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 otherwise the company here knows. But um, Mancha, I can't thank you enough, and uh, thank you for, for this evening as well. Uh, Le Tout Monde, Le Tout Monde, Chaos World, and the New Baroque. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, it's, it's a real pleasure to be doing this. Uh, the chapter I'm going to be talking about uh, when I'm done with it is going to be called uh, The Poetics of Opacity. That's the, the, the title of the chapter. Uh, and it is coming after a chapter that I, I called uh, People told me it's an ugly word. It's called uh, the world mentality of Edouard Glissant. You know, it's, uh, people said, speak English. Uh, and then I have a chapter on the ar archipelagic top, which I did here at once. And then a chapter on uh, poetics of trembling, which is very important to, to Glissant. Uh, in fact, uh, the poetic of trembling deals a lot with the the, the black beach because of the ways in which the ocean, the volcanoes sweep the black sand on the ocean at night and in the morning the sand is cleaned all over again uh, and then different kind of uh, Martinicans who think they know the problem of Martinique, they will come and use Marxism, psychoanalysis, philosophy, uh, you know, economics, in order to say this is what Marx, uh, Martinique's problem is. And then this young man walks on the beach, refuses to talk to any, any, anybody, basically. Uh, so, and Gleason, first, Gleason's attempt to reach this young man and talk to the young man, and then begin to have an affinity, begin to tremble with the young man is basically what that uh, chapter is about. The, the one I'm working on now uh, that you are getting uh, in notes, uh, Poetics of Opacity, really uh, it is a chapter, I have the elements I'm looking for a way on the one hand for it to, to fit with the other chapters, but on the other hand, it is probably uh, the, I don't know if I should say this, the most important uh, uh, contribution at this moment of Glissant to, to thought after creolization, uh, after two mond, uh, getting us to take opacity seriously is, it, it, it's really Gleason's way at getting at politics, getting at ethics, getting at identity, uh, and then getting at difference, differences. It, it, very important to Gleason. And opacity is what really uh, opened the door for these kind of discussions. Uh, of course, getting at relation too. Because uh, when, I, when I first began to work, especially film work on Gleason, I was not Opacity was now what caught my attention. Uh, op opacity became important to me when art, his art, art students, architecture students, uh, began to ask me questions because of the film about Gleason's right to opacity. You know, I was just interested in the, the major themes, you know, uh, creolization, relation, 
two mond uh, archipelago. That's what I was interested in. And opacity kind of imposed itself on me in some ways. Uh, how did we get to that? Uh, we talk a lot about, well, Fanon and Césaire came up uh, often today. They came up because uh, they were very courageous critics of uh, French culture, French civilization, uh, universalism with capital U. They were critics of this. And uh, they were also critics of the Negritude movement. And Negritude is a movement started in the 40s, uh, late 30s to 40s, and culmination of negritude would be really the 1956 conference in Paris, where the whole black world, for the first time, they got together to talk about negritude, to talk about decolonization, uh, and how they it, it become a controversial conference, because for people, men like Senghor and even Cesar to an extent, uh, this was the opportunity finally to uh, proclaim uh, negritude as the universal black movement. But it also coincided with people like Franz Fanon, young man, had published the uh, 52 uh, the, the black skin, white masks, and who were very impatient with negritude. Because Senghor especially had defined negritude as uh, the black way of being in the world. And then he said, in these black ways of being in the world, uh, music, well, before I get to that, you have uh, subjective ways, black subjective ways of being in the world, and you have black objective ways of being in the world. And, and you have to understand they are reacting to Europe's definition, definitions of blackness of what it is to be African. So they were reacting. So Senghor's task was to say we are different. We are different because the West, he, he says this very controversial statement. He said, la raison est Hélène, and the re reason is Hellenic. And uh, l'émotion est nègre, emotion is black. So the whole, definition of uh, subjective negritude was on those, along those lines, to look at black people in rhythm, to look at sensibility, emotion, intuition, uh, and so on. And uh, subjective negritude, uh, objective negritude would be uh, the culmination of the research of uh, anthropologists like uh, Leo Frobenis that we mentioned here, and, but also uh, anthropologists from the uh, French school, uh, people like Michel Leris, people who have really established the big kingdoms in Africa that uh, uh, come to uh, the uh, culmination before the West came to Africa. So they, they talk about the Sunjata epic, the Monomotapa epic, uh, different kind of kingdoms in Africa. So that's this, you know, to prove to people that Africans have civilization too. This was Negritude's task. Senghor would even go as far as to say that if you look at uh, modernism, the trumpet and the African mask were the two most important objects in modernism. You know, from the Picassos to music to film noir, if you begin to look for African masks that decorate the rooms, and you look for the trum uh, uh, jazz, so trumpet stood for jazz, and African mask for African art. So Senghor would go as far as to say that. So 1956, Fanon is upset. Already with black skin, white mask, he's very upset. Uh, he said, uh, I'm a rational man. Why are you defining me? You, you, you basically taking rationality away from me. He had already severely criticized Jean-Paul Sartre because Jean-Paul Sartre reviewed uh, a, an anthology by Senghor uh, called Anthology of the New uh, Negro and Malagashi uh, Poetry. And Jean-Paul Sartre's uh, 
introduction was called Orphe Noir, Black Orpheus. And this introduction became more famous than the book. And Fanon was quite upset. And the, the gist, the, the really, the, 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 the main theme, the, the thesis of the introduction was that one, these poets are the best po poets in the French language. Two, but these poets, you know, blackness was uh, 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 condemned to death because it need to join the proletariat. It need, so this is the best of poetry in French language, and this poetry should become the proletarian poets, not just race poets. And Fanon was upset. Fanon said, this great Hegelian uh, actually took away from me my agency before I even recovered my agency. That was Fanon's critique uh, of, uh, uh, of Jean-Paul Sartre's thesis. So Fanon come to negritude, and Fanon, uh, he, he made this statement, uh, because he was really upset with uh, these ideas of uh, emotional, these ideas uh, of relying on the past in order to justify your humanity and so on. So Fanon said, uh, in, in black skin, white mask, uh, around uh, 157, he says, Pour un homme qui n'a comme arme que la raison, il n'y a rien de plus révoltant que le contact, uh, non, il n'y a rien de plus névrotique que le contact avec l'irrationnel. For a man whose only weapon, whose main weapon is reason, rationality, there is nothing that drives me as crazy as the contact with the irrational. Because this negative stuff is irrational. What are you doing to me? So this was Fanon's point. You know, what are you doing to me? Uh, my, my main weapon is rationality, and you are taking that away from me. But at the same time, uh, there were two people really. Uh, you had a poet uh, from uh, Senegal called Birago Diop, D-I-O-P, uh, and, and of course Césaire. Birago Diop uh, had written a poem in that anthology that I just mentioned, uh, uh, 1947, Anthology de la Nouvelle Poésie Negre. Uh, Birago Job wrote something called breath, uh, souffle, like the breath. And in this, uh, he says, écoute plus souvent les choses que les êtres. La voix du fait s'entend, entend la voix de l'eau. So he basically made the point that you should listen more often to things than to people. The voice of the fire can be heard. The voice of the water can be heard. And he was making the point that people were losing this. And when we were kids in uh, elementary school, we, I mean, every Francophone person knew this by heart. You know, écoute plus souvent les choses que les êtres. La voix du feu s'entend, entend la voix de l'eau. To say, then he would say, this is the, the voice of the ancestors speaking to you. You know, so he said this finance irrationality. And then Césaire says, que deux et deux font cinq, que l'arbre tire les marrons du feu, que le ciel se lisse la barbe. So this is surrealism. Let, let me see if I can translate it better. That two and two equals five. That the three is pulling the uh, marshmallows from the fire that uh, the sky is uh, uh, smoothing its beard, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So again, they're going against Fanonian uh, uh, rationality. Uh, and of course, uh, much, much later on, uh, Glissant said uh, a very important point. He said, uh, L'opacité, c'est ce qui protège le divers. And this is really one of the main points about Glissa. He said, opacity is that which uh, protects diversity. Nowadays, more and more people are beginning to use uh, le divers, especially in Caribbean, people like Chamoiseau, they are beginning to say diversalism as opposed to universalism. 
So I don't know if that's good English or not, but because Gleason just said with capital D that opacity is the only thing that can protect diversity. You know, so, so, so Gleason uh, makes that point. Uh, but all of this uh, is based on Césaire, Gleason, Fanon, uh, especially, but also the black world, talking about uh, the, the black studies. The black world that is of the West, but uh, critical of the West, critical of modernity, critical of rationality. Uh, it, so they, they had reached a point uh, where somebody like uh, Cesar will say directly, uh, let me put on my glasses and see if, if I can get some of this, because uh, the translation's not, not quite well translated. Uh, we are for those who have the capacity to free people's energies for creativity and against those that canalize and sterilize their creativity. They felt that that's what colonialism really was doing to Africans. And this was something. Uh, and then Cesare is famous for, like, just like uh, Richard Wright in The God uh, That Died. Uh, he's famous for his uh, resignation from the uh, Communist Party. And here is what, what he's saying to us. Cesare says, the French communists and bourgeois and the bourgeois share the same chauvinism. They believe in civilization with a capital C. This, this is one of the, the main critiques that uh, he had against, uh, it, to, to Maurice, Maurice Torres, uh, against the way the communists, on the one hand, the bourgeois wanted them to be black one way, and the communists also did not do any better. You know, Richard Wright, uh, in, in The God That Failed, has a very moving uh, essay again when uh, in the black community he's, uh, uh, he's not an individual and among the communists also he's only black. So he's walking by himself in the dark. He's thinking about this. It's a very hard moment for Richard Wright uh, in that uh, uh, Kostler book, uh, The God That Failed, a famous book in some ways. and and. Here is what Césaire say, he said, uh, in French, basically says, « Et si j'étais chrétien ou musulman, je dirais la, je dirais la même chose, qu'aucune doctrine ne vaut que repenser par nous, que repenser pour nous, que converti à nous. » So if I were Christian or Muslim, I would say the same thing. Uh, no, no theory, no uh, doctrine is uh, valid to us unless it, i it is uh, taught for us, taught by us, and, and converted to us. Well, basically, black Christianity, black Muslim, black, so Caesar, this is what Caesar is saying. Unless we can have black Christianity or black Islam or whatever it is in those days, because uh, we're talking about uh, roughly 46 to 56, you know. Uh, so no doctrine unless we can make it relevant to our causes. And our causes in those days were not to uh, make the, the, the Christian church bigger or uh, the communist uh, party larger. It was uh, to be able to think uh, for ourselves uh, and to convert this. If these doctrines are really good, let's have black. Was well, Cedric Robinson took care of this later on. Uh, and then uh, we come to, 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 to Glissant and, and uh, these ideas. Uh, fr uh, I have over citations, but I think uh, it's important that I just move on to opacity uh, at this point. And uh, so we begin with uh, the important statement that I just, I just made, uh, which is that uh, opacity is that which uh, protects 
the diverse or le divers, but the diverse is not the best translation I have again. Uh, and I don't know if I want to go the, uh, the Caribbean way, call it diversalism as opposed to universalism. But, but it's something to, to keep in mind uh, as, as very important. And, and Glissa, uh, he, he basically, in order to get to, uh, to opacity, he want to go, uh, he want to talk about the poem first. And then the title that I have here basically, uh, it as an introduction, is my attempt to uh, this is uh, uh, Fredo Lamb's The Jungle. Uh, and this to, to, to Glissant was uh, one of the, the, one of the uh, manifestations of what he called Le Tout Monde or Baroque Monde uh, uh, or Caius War. And again, we talk about, I'm really grateful that I had people here who knew more about physics and all of that today when we we're talking about sciences because Glissant, he took this from physics, chaos, but he said, lo cao ne pa chaotic. Chaos world is not a, 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 a chaotic world. It's a world that is uh, uh, dispersé, dispersed all over the place, and then it's up to us to bring the elements together. This is what he say. It's not that it's just you in front of uh, chaos in a way. So he says that. and. Uh, and, and Gleason said all this is happening uh, because not only Western rationality, but uh, the black world, uh, but in Latin America, in the Caribbean, they felt that in order uh, to combat racism, they too have to create nation states. You know, phenom 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 you know, uh, and Caesar uh, uh, said it at this 56 conference, uh, he said eloquently that there is no culture but national culture. So you guys stop this whole African, uh, you know, uh, voodoo stuff, take your weapons, liberate yourself. As you liberate yourself, you create your culture, but don't go back to your past, you know. So, so Fanon is saying this, adamantly he's upset because they, they believe that and the European and they write fully uh, they write to believe that they believe that different moments in European history and modernity and uh, the, the construction of democracy Europe had at its disposal to solve the problems of the world but Europe did not want to do this you know, they had modernity, modernity was developed, they had democracy, but according to Cesar first, using Malinowski, they gave Africa a limited gift. They didn't want to give them a gift that would emancipate them. Uh, and so they, they were parsimonious. Uh, they really thought that everything good in modernity only was good for them. And so th they refused. To, to distribute this. And, and, and when Gleason came, uh, Gleason is saying, but unwittingly, what modernity actually did that Europe didn't want to do was to connect the world. You know, the world was connected. And since the world was connected, the world, e Europe at that time was also com you know, coming to what they call the end of history. They repeated this later on in America. But uh, because they could not do certain things in the world, they said, this is the end of history. And then you, know, you, you have repetitions of this in post-structuralism, where language only referred to language, philosophy only referred to philosophy, and we are no longer referring to the world outside of, the, uh, of language. You know, uh, in my field, uh, people call this the linguistic turn, where in, is really what Heidegger said this is, and then how that was reinterpreted by Derrida and, uh, or Husserl or Kant. You go back and forth, so you stay in the language. Uh, and these people were be just beginning history, and they were being told that history was ended. 
So y you really need to learn what they are doing. And so I wrote an essay about Glissankov, uh, a philosopher saint -Père, a philosopher without father. Because that's the worst thing in philosophy, not to have a father, basically, because you have to go from Plato to Aristotle to the rest of us. And Glissant was a philosopher uh, French word, French language is better because some pair mean without equal, but also without the genitor, the, the father, le père. You know, we talk a lot about this here, but you know, incomparable uh, also in, in the French language. So Gleason said, well, you know, we just have a, we have a new Baroque that's different from the way the Baroque was opposed to classicism, and this new Baroque is on the one hand, uh, facilitated by modernity, because it's connecting the world together, but also by the movements of decolonization. But for Glissant, the problem with the movements of decolonization, and I'm still working this out for myself, uh, was that they borrowed the same language from the West. They were oppositional languages. The languages where uh, differences were not assembled, differences were separated further, and then uh, Glissa even called them uh, uh, like uh, not just angry, but uh, differences that actually kill, uh, amputated each other. You know, like cut your arm off if you're different from me, literally. So uh, Gleason thought that we needed to correct that in the decolonization movement. And you know, you go tell that to Fanon, you know, who leaves his nationality in France and become Algerian. Uh, still his family is there. Uh, so it's not just violence, but it's this, the very idea of oppositional discourse uh, was not very uh, pleasing to, to, to Glissant. And Glissant, uh, of course, Fanon did, you know, you remember Wretched of the Earth where Fanon does this kind of taxonomy of literature. He says, in the beginning, you know, the colonized, they will have uh, oral literature, they will have poetry. But as the struggle intensified and clarifies itself, they will remove poetry and they will begin to write essays. And, and, you know, and then another form of epic will emerge. This is what Fanon is saying. And epic happened to be something that Glissant doesn't like at all. Uh, uh, and, but just like the, the Greek or Plato, just like uh, Western philosophy, I'm exaggerating this because I know many philosophers who wrote you know, uh, on, 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 on poems and po uh, poets and so on. But just as they kicked poetry out of the Republic, Fanon too thought that it was necessary to get poetry out of the way if we want to talk and understand each other in, in the wretched of the earth. And, and Gleason took this and I was saying today uh, about the abyss, he related this discussion to uh, the abyss, to the way the poem was buried. If you read uh, Poetics of Relation, you see many places uh, where Glissant is lamenting the fact that before this very uh, bad difference, uh, oppositional differences emerged, he, he was saying, before times were defined, uh, taxon taxonomies were put in place, uh, nor uh, normative discourses were put in place, he said, genre, uh, les genres, genders were not yet defined. He said there was a time when we didn't have men and women. He said, Pro uh, the proof is, in my village there used to be a papaya tree, a male papaya tree that bore fruits. So, but we brought differences and taxonomies. But by the way, that too is uh, around page 11 of Poetics of Relation. But if you don't find it, uh, I'd be happy to, sh to show it to you tomorrow. Uh, so taxonomies are put in place. The poem is buried, uh, what Glissant called l'effondrement. 
in, in the collapsing of the earth, in the, the earthquake, but also in the abyss where slaves died in the ocean at the bottom of the ocean. Poetry was buried there in order to bring transparency, understanding, system, systematicity. Uh, you know, everything has to be understood in these terms. Uh, and Gleason said, but in, for this new world, new baroque, new, uh, we need to look for the poem. We have to look, the poem has, we have to find the poem all over again. And, and this search for the poem, uh, in, a, in French he said, mais le poem est en effet la seule dimension de la vérité eh, ou de permanence. So the, po, 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 the poem is actually the only dimension of truth and permanence. There is nothing else uh, for, for Glissant. Uh, uh, ou de déviance, or, or of deviation. You know, poetry is the only way you can misread and come back and read again and read in different ways. So, so he says that. Uh, and then, uh, that which connects all the presences of the world. So the poem is the only thing you can use to connect the presences of the world. You know, contradictory presences. Qui really toutes les présences du monde. And, and then he, you know, he does things that are disturbing to those of us who uh, uh, grew up in decolonization, uh, in decolonial today, uh, where we find energy in opposition. Gleason says, po the poem is the only thing that can relate the conqueror and the conquered, the savant and the, uh, the elementary communities, uh, songs and uh, el elman, c'est quoi elman, elle, French, you know, like, uh, you know, when, uh, like a goat makes a sound like that. Uh, you know, hell my. So, 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 so the, poem, the poem is the only thing that I can find uh, creativity in all these things. Uh, so, in order to, 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 to explain a little bit what I think uh, Glissa is doing here, uh, I began to do like Glissa go look for this first poem that Gleason says gave, gave birth to itself, so generous. And it's, uh, I looked at, uh, I was at that time uh, visiting the, the, the studio of David Hammonds. So I said, well, uh, let me try to take what Gleason is saying and apply it a little bit to uh, what David Hammond is doing. Uh, so I, I'm gonna do a little bit of reading, if, if you forgive me. Great artists like David Hammonds are always imitating the gestures of the first cave artists, soothsayers, and healers. And in this sense, we can say that they are always looking for the first painting or the first poem. An important part of Hammonds' art consists in searching for art in a world that has lost its soul through an obsession with progress, techno technological applications, which are all subservient to profit. He is the only living artist, uh, to my knowledge, who is not trying to discover the newest brush stroke, beautiful color combinations, and other ways of redirecting our perception of art. Hammond is, Hammond is confident that we have simply lost the work of art in our rush to make it beautiful, to make it signify an identity or political stance. We have destroyed the spirit and the energy of art by aligning it with consensual thinking and hegemonic solutions, academic exercises, and the artist's desire to be admired and loved. We have buried, and, uh, we have buried art and its truth in the debris of progress, and the technicization of human relations. And now, like Orpheus, and now like Orpheus, actually can show you more of this. He did this show in the biggest art gallery in Los Angeles, 
probably the richest too, uh, is called House and Wharf. And so these are that David's paintings, uh, or whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, in the, the chicest of the chic in the world, in House and Wharf. They're from this country, actually. So they have a gallery in London, in Los Angeles, New York, and most likely Zurich. Uh, but this is David Hammond's work there. Uh, they gave him the whole place, uh, basically, to do this. And of course, the other thing about David Hammond is that the, uh, when, when he does something, the whole art world began, it, it's like a, a huge gossip, uh, you know, machine that gets uh, into motion. Some people say, well, you know, they gave him 35 million so he can uh, do the exhibition. Uh, but I can assure you that uh, David actually only sold 50, agreed to sell only 15% of his work there. Uh, but uh, let me continue this. Uh, and now, like Orpheus, we have to look for the painting. We have to retrieve it from the rubbles of crumbling buildings, the similar crumb of trompe l'oeil of artificial intelligence, and the well-made painting. We have to engage in a search for the painting as if it were hiding behind a discarded armoire in the garbage dump, abandoned and forgotten in nature. Hammond's art is about stopping time so that we could participate in re uh, rescuing the artwork that we have trampled, uh, that we are trampling under our feet, the art we lost a long time ago because of our ego that only sees itself in everything. The genius of Hammond resides in his ability to find the spirit-covered objects that, once found and put together, bring back the energy carried by the first cave paintings. And that, and that still provokes our imaginary to momentarily ponder on the mystery of life and the magic uh, hiding in the discarded objects. And then I gave some examples, but they're not here. Uh, he, he did this incredible painting. With, uh, well, he, he collects carpets from Amsterdam that people put in front of their doors. And they, so when, when visitors come, they step on it. So you have chewing gum uh, st stuck to the carpet. And so they sell them to David, and David took one of them and then connected the chewing gum spots with uh, a, a nylon uh, wire. And then he called it first constellation. And then he had a, a, a big blue thing in the background, which is really bleu uh, marjorel, very beautiful. And then he just hung the carpet like that, and he called it constellation. And uh, when he was doing this show, he said, that's so obvious. I don't want to call it conspiracy. Let's just call it Spitz. So he called it Spitz, literally. And, and, and that, that was $6 million. So, you know, so that, that's, that's the kind of person. Uh, so I, don't, I, I have that. If you want to see it, I have it in my telephone, but it's not in this uh, place here. Uh, and this, of course, is the, the black painting of uh, Ellen Gallagher that some of you may know. She's a major artist uh, at this moment. Uh, uh, these are her black painting. Uh, and then I wrote underneath, uh, so opacity is that which protects uh, di uh, the, the diverse. And so I, I went, you know, like a, a student, I went to David and, and then, you know, I had a long paper on him and I read this. So David, he, 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 he loved to joke. Uh, so he, he basically started snoring while I was reading. He was snoring uh, until I basically said, uh, magic, energy, and spirit. He said, stop there. <laughs> That's it. Just put that and you have the article. And then, you know, when I was going to give that presentation, he said, and, and make sure you don't say only nice things about me. You know why? You will destroy, and his expression is, my, my, my mythification. <laughs> he said, this is, this is, so he wants to keep his myth to himself and only he has the right to define it. So he said, don't, he can lie about me, he can do whatever, but don't say only nice things about me. 
So you my witness, I didn't say only nice things. So uh, then we come to, uh, to opacity, uh, which for Glisa is really that which opened the, uh, the door, the feature, the door to the feature, because the meaning is not fixed or transparent. It is always deferred. And uh, if you look at uh, Faulkner, Mississippi, uh, you could see this around page 262. The poem and the sacred uh, reassemble differences and nurture relation. Le poème est la seule dimension de la vérité, and I think I talked about this early, uh, earlier. Uh, and and Gleason's, therefore, here is uh, the, the, the question that interests us. Gleason saying he demand the right. Uh, je, je demande le droit à l'opacité, right to opacity. You know, this, and this is like a right, he's serious about it, like he go to the UN and he demand a right to opacity. And of course, at about two years ago, I, I showed my film uh, on Edward Gleason, One World in Relation, and it was in Sarja. And one person raised uh, the hand and say, you know, I, I'm gay and I'm from this area of uh, the Emirates. I'm afraid that our dictators will use this as an excuse to uh, oppress more of us. So you have to clarify what this right to opacity in the film is all about. You know, of course, the answer was easy, but we'll go through it. The answer was easy because opacity is not something that you know really. Glissant is just criticizing the UN. If you, money, if you fabricate opacity, then it's no longer opacity. You know, opacity is more interesting, as he said, when he does not like the broccoli, but he does not know why he does not like the broccoli. But if you know it, uh, if you know the, the reasons, then it's no long, it's something else that you can, you can fix. Uh, so, uh, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm citing the gentleman here because I think he had uh, a reasonable concern, you know, because if we just begin to throw a, a back and forth this idea of opacity, uh, some people may recuperate it and it's more radical than that. Uh, so first, you have opacity and difference. The, uh, the right to difference uh, versus the right to opacity. This, this was very important to, uh, to, to Gleason because especially people like us in black studies, we spend uh, you know, a major part of our discipline uh, demanding the right to difference politics of recognition, people like Charles Taylor, and so on, that people know that, uh, you know, uh, we have an identity that is not a pathological identity, it's a different identity. Uh, and uh, so Glissa is trying to look at difference and, and identity, uh, mostly in poetic de la relation that we have, but also in philosophy de la relation. The idea of the right to difference as necessary as it is uh, for the protection of minorities could lead, could lead to claims of fixed, reducted. The word reducted is very important to Gleason in, in, in poetics of relation, if you check it, uh, a reducted identity. Uh, so uh, reducted and transparent concept of identity and identification. I reduce your complexity in order to understand you through comparison. I understand you, therefore, we are the same. Therefore, you are me. So this is really the, the, the struggle that's going on. Uh, we have to protect and promote diversalism, the sum of all our differences from all assimilationist and standardizing attempt to reduce our identities. So, if we look at, at opacity as the first consent to this diversalism, I'm using the word now. Uh, 
Gleason began to look at uh, the opacity in the light, opacity in darkness, uh, and he, he began to look at these issues. And let me tell you what I think he's trying to say. Darkness can be opaque, but opacity is not only the obscure. There is opacity in the light. Opacity is a signal for a place that is looking for its identity in relation and diversity. When the place finds its place in relation and diversity, it has found its freedom. So th this, this was very important uh, to Glissa. I'll show you a clip of this uh, later on, actually. Let me take this out now. Uh, if I can, maybe I may need the help. No, I think I can do it, hopefully, yeah. Uh, And, and he said uh, opacity is actually a value which we should oppose to any pseudo-humanist uh, temptation to reduce a uh, human being to the level of the universal. And from the right to difference to the right to opacity, uh, Gleason basically is still insisting on uh, distinguishing them. La différence elle-même peut encore ménager une réduction au transparent. That is, difference itself, when we insist too much on difference, we are actually doing the same reduction that he was worried about. And we are actually making the different transparent. If we take all the elements out of it and we begin to insist on, you know, uh, it's different, you don't understand. Just like the same, insisting too much on only the same or only the different is to reduce the minimum uh, substance of the object. This was very important to them. Non seulement, so, so he's saying, non seulement pas consentir uh, au droit à la différence, mais plus avant au droit à l'opacité. So therefore, less, less, yes, we can ask for difference, but it's more important to ask for the right to opacity. This is more important than say, insisting on a difference. Uh, uh, And he said there is something revolutionary to be gained by this sharing of our serendipities rather than insisting on going to the bottom of things, their nature. And I think uh, Stefan was talking today about depth and uh, extension, so, uh, something like that at some point. Uh, and he said, uh, you know, by, by talking about the right to opacity, I'm not trying to get us to some level of autism. And again, I don't know if that's well translated. Uh, but opacity is really about relation and freedom. These are the, the elements of opacity. It's really about relation and, and freedom. Uh, because opacity is the one that goes, and again, difficult translation, aller à l'amèlement the tram, the mixing, the mixing, the, 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 the weaving of all the strands together. I mean, your, your question of uh, fee, uh, file of filiation, feel, comes here. The webs, how they all get uh, trammed together is, is what's important to, to Glissant. Uh, So he, he, he talks about transparency. That's why he just says that there is transparency in the mirror. This again, he's revisiting Fanon. You know, you have Lacan, a mirror face that those of us who are in film studies really went to town in the 80s and 90s. This was really what you, have, you had to study. And then Fanon's mirror theory, uh, I can reduce it to 
you know, black man, black person looking at him herself in the mirror and seeing a white person, or the failure, therefore, of that. And then, uh, white person also, because the body collapsing is not something only black, it's also something uh, that concerns uh, white people seeing themselves in the mirror and let's say in the Olympic, a black person running faster than a white person. If you, if you uh, apply, oh, I won't touch this. Yeah, if you uh, apply Fanon's mirror theory to that, it's really about bodies assembling and disassembling. And, and so Gleason said, actually, the mirror is opaque too. The mirror is not just uh, about, the, the, there is opacity in the mirror. Uh, and then I already told you, it, it, the opaque is not just uh, the obscure or the darkness, but the opaque is in the light. Uh, and I actually promised myself to show you a clip here so that I can give you a little bit of That's, uh, okay. Obscurity is a, 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 a way to resist. But opacity is not. This is, we force him to speak English here, and he hates this. He had no choice, because somebody mistranslated him. It is not the lack of light. Because there is opacity. You were at this conference, yeah. When we don't really know from where the light is issuing or coming. That's the point. Uh, where opacity can work. Opacity is the research of the origin of every light. So, opacity is the research of such a place, the place from where the light is issuing. Opacity is a signal for a place. When the place is difficult, of access. That means when it cannot find its place, its place, the place of the place in relation and diversity. When the place is difficult to know. And when the place is difficult to understand, that means to derocate after it, it found its place, the place of the place. And finding its place, the place finds its liberty. L'opacité ne se définit pas, ni ne se commande. Mais réclamer pour tous le droit à l'opacité, c'est renoncer à ramener les vérités du monde à la seule mesure d'une seule transparence, d'un seul éclairage, qui serait les miens et que j'imposerais. d'opacité ménagée entre l'homme et moi est mutuellement consentie, garantit sa liberté et confirme mon libre envie 
dans une relation de pur partage. Il y a 40 ans, à Mexico, dans une conférence avec euh, Octavio Paz, j'avais dit « Je réclame le droit à l'opacité. » Il y a une injustice fondamentale à ce que la projection de la transparence des pensées occidentales soit sur les bons sur le monde entier. Mais pourquoi Pourquoi devons-nous estimer les gens au barème, selon le barème de la transparence des idées eh, qui, qui a été proposée par l'Occident. Eh, je, je comprends, je comprends ceci, je comprends cela, je comprends ceci, je comprends la rationalité. Et, et, et je dis, mais euh, quelqu'un a le droit euh, d'être opaque à mes yeux ça ne va pas m'empêcher de l'aimer, de travailler avec la personne, et de la fréquenter, etc. Et le, le raciste, c'est celui qui refuse ce qu'il ne comprend pas. Je peux accepter ce que je ne comprends pas. Et, et l'opacité, c'est un droit euh, que, que nous devons avoir. Et toute la salle a dit mais qu'est-ce que c'est que cette barbarie eh, Alors, quoi On ne comprend c est, c est, c est, Il faut comprendre. Si on ne comprend pas, qu'est-ce que c'est Etc. Et je, je vous assure que 20 ans après, ou 30 ans après, dans la même salle, dans la même ville, il y a eu une, 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 une réunion, une conférence, et, 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 et tout à fait plaisamment, j'ai rappelé la, 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 ce que j'avais dit euh, 20 ans avant ou 30 ans avant, et, et tous les gens dans la salle ont dit, ah non, ah non, il faut euh, réclamer à l'ONU le droit à la, à la loi passée. Pourquoi Parce que les gens avaient fini par comprendre que euh, c'était une barbarie, la barbarie c'était justement d'imposer à l'autre sa propre transparence. Et, et, et moi je dis toujours euh, aux, aux psychiatres, aux psychanalystes, si je n'accepte pas ma propre opacité pour moi-même, effectivement, je me, je me défais. Mais je peux accepter ma propre opacité, dire je ne sais pas pourquoi, je ne sais pas pourquoi je déteste ces personnes ou j'aime ces personnes, mais je ne je sais pas pourquoi. Pourquoi Il n'y a aucune raison, il n'y a aucune qualité, il n'y a aucune âme, je, je sais. Est-ce qu'on est qu sait pourquoi on déteste le, le chou-fleur ou le. Est-ce qu'on sait pourquoi est-ce qu'on comprend pourquoi on déteste le... Moi, je déteste le... cette le... plante verte, la... le petit légume vert, la... le... le brocoli. Tout le monde aime le brocoli. Je déteste le brocoli. Mais est-ce que je sais pourquoi Pas du tout. J'accepte mon opacité sur ce plan-là. Pourquoi je ne l'accepterai pas sur d'autres plans Et pourquoi je n'accepterai pas l'opacité de l'autre pourquoi je dois obligatoirement comprendre l'autre pour euh, 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 vivre à côté de lui, travailler avec lui, etc. C'est absolument, et c'est une des lois de la relation. Parce que la relation, dans la relation, les éléments ne se confondent pas comme ça, ne se perdent pas comme ça. Chacun, chaque élément, garder son, je ne dirais pas seulement son autonomie, mais son, son, son essentialité, mais ça, tout en 
sortons dedans des essentialités et des différences des autres. Eh bien, en, en 30 ans, les gens avaient compris ça. OK. He basically is telling my son, are you feeling me the right way, my, my right profile? That's what he said. <laughs> okay. But the, then I don't know what we're doing with time. Uh, then I talk about opacity and ethics, which is very short. And, uh, uh, but we could engage those in question answers, whatever you want. We could, yeah. Okay, all right, I just don't, the jet lag and not me. Good, good. So, 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 so Gleason looks at uh, opacity first uh, and myth and tragedy. Uh, he says myth and tragedy equals exclusion and transparency equals understanding. Uh, opacity is a gesture of sharing our coincidences, the serendipity that I was talking about, that opens the door to uh, the diverse, to the two monde. And but his point about myth and tragedy is that they are all uh, about the legitimation of filiation. The myth uh, make you, uh, is the or, uh, you know, uh, origin, uh, story which tell you the founders of a place and then when you find it out you are also finding out uh, at the same time uh, all the people who are excluded from that so this is why he goes against uh, myth and mythology and uh, it, tragedy the same way it's you know people breaking the law are the people who get punished at the end so again is insisting on filiation uh, that we talk about today. Uh, it is the diverse, diversalism promised by the concept of opacity that igni ignite the motor of relation and make it look uh, the way it is. La pensée de l'opacité me garde des voies univoques et des voies uh, irréversibles. So, Opacity help, uh, helps me, protects me, or keeps me from taking uh, one-way roads or uh, the choices that cannot be reversed. So this, this was something that was important to him. And opacity and identity, we talk a lot about this today. Uh, Gleason said, I accept that identity uh, is in certain areas a source of obscurity, a source of malaise, uh, something that we cannot understand totally. Part of our identities are obscure, unknown to us. We undo ourselves in our determination to reduce ourselves to absolutist identities, self-knowing and transparent. Sometimes we do not understand our own motivation and the broccoli is a, a case in point. Uh, opacity and, uh, and uh, ethical action and relation. Uh, he says, la règle de toute action individuelle ou communautaire, the rule behind every individual or communi uh, community uh, action uh, will, will, will do well uh, to take uh, the lived experience ser seriously, uh, and that really is the uh, the the, uh, the the the, na the narration of the ethic. So to him, the et the ethics are in the story of the lived experience, in other words, in the poetics of relation. So it's in action that we get to ethics, and and this is very important to Gleason because. People assume that ethics are some, something outside of uh, everyday practice. He said, actually, ethics are constantly being defined through, uh, uh, through your, your lived experience. Uh,
It, it, it's impossible to reduce any, whatever it is to one proof that, that a community did not generate itself. So to, to, to apply a, an ethic on a community that they did not generate themselves, that they did not produce, uh, would be a mistake uh, for Glissant. In, it's in this sense that he liked to put opacity in time and space. It's always tied to time and space. Uh, opacity can enter in relation, where one can enter in relation with another person in confluence uh, without being uh, themselves or uh, assimilated by another. And th this, this, this is almost a cliche in Gleason when he said, I can change through exchanging with the other without uh, uh, alienating myself or destroying myself. And he's really talking to French people here, the people who are afraid of the other. If I, 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 re I deal with the other, I will be contaminated. I'll lose my culture. Gleason said, on the contrary, one spirituality can learn from the spirituality of another spirit. Uh, uh, spiritualism. Uh, so he is really talking uh, to, to French people here. Uh, opacity is uh, the mirror reflection, and I think we talk, I talked about this earlier. Opacity is, is in the background, and the only thing I want to add to this is that when you look at yourself in the mirror, opacity is in the background of the mirror not a reflection of the same. So you're looking for yourself in the mirror, but whatever is in the background is really what the real story of you is. You know, the history, everything you have accumulated all the way to that point, that's the part of opacity in the mirror, uh, not the reflection that you're looking for. Uh, but something in permanent and continuous uh, movement changing, uncertain, and becoming. Opacity challenges our certitude about the reflected image in the mirror. Uh, consenting to the opacity of the other helps us to realize and accept our own opacity. And then I, I come back to, you know, that, that, as I said, it's a paper in, in progress. I come back to these ideas of Gleason talking about uh, how do we create uh, a, com a in, how can a community have a collective uh, unconscious, which he calls opacity, by entering in relation with one another, uh, and cons a, a community can create. Uh, a, coll a collective, and this is the politics of opacity. A community can uh, constitute a, a collective unconscious, which can uh, enter in solidarity, and solidarity was very important to him with other communities' uh, opacities. So opacities from one place can enter in relation with other places uh, through, through relation, and, and, and this, this was uh, quite important to him. I I think I'm going to stop here, if you don't mind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.